Hello, Tom Base family. This is Bo, and I'm really excited to present this lesson on introduction to scales today. Let's first talk about what scales are. Scales are a collection of pitches ordered in ascending or descending motion. The scales we are looking at today, in particular, are major scales. All major scales are constructed using a specific sequence of whole steps and half steps. On the guitar, a half step is exactly one fret away from the beginning pitch. So, for example, if your beginning if your beginning pitch is A, a half step up from A would be one fret away. On the other hand, a whole step is two frets away from the beginning pitch. So again, if A were the beginning pitch, the, a whole step up from it would be two frets away. Now that we talked about what half and whole steps are, let's take a look at the sequence for major scales. It's whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. If we try to play this on a single string, it will sound like this. As you can see, playing scales on a single string is really impractical, and that's why most musical exercises and passages involving scales use several strings to play them. Let's begin with the simple pattern beginning on the sixth string. Pay special attention to the fingerings. Two, four, one, two, four, one, three. And coming back on um, the same way. Four, three, one, four, two, one, four, two. Let's make note of a few things. First of all, we're making use of three consecutive strings. Um, in this case, six, five, four, and then coming back, four, five, six. Secondly, we're playing a pattern that consists of two, three, three notes. Meaning on the beginning string, the sixth string, we play two pitches. And then on the following, we play three. And then the highest string, we play three more. And lastly, we're making use of one fret per finger on the um, for the left hand. Essentially, this means we're not having to stretch in the left hand and everything should fall within the same position. These three characteristics are the basis for the first group of major scales we'll be covering. We'll refer to these as two, three, three patterns on the string in which we begin. For example, um, G major two, three, three on the sixth string um, will be this. It is important that with all scales, we practice saying the pitches, whether in letters or solfage, while playing these scales. This will really reinforce our knowledge of the fretboard and the construction of the scales. So for example, for the same G major I just played, you would say G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G, G, F sharp, E, D, C. Finally, one of the characteristics of the fretboard is that all patterns are transposable. Like with some of our favorite chords, perhaps power chords, if we take a 2-3-3 three, three pattern, such as this G major that we just played, and shift up the same pattern up the fretboard to, let's say, fourth position, we still get a major scale. However, since we're starting on a different pitch, in this case A, we now have A major 2-3-3 three, three on the sixth string. This will be true for all patterns, whether major or minor scales or chords of varying qualities. When playing our 2-3-3 three, three patterns, you will notice that certain scales begin to get quite high up on the neck. For example, E major 2-3-3 three, three on 6th string, A major 2-3 three, three on 5th, and D major 2-3-3 three, three on 4th scales suffer from this. Here is E major 2, 3, 3 on the 6th string and see how high up it gets on the neck.
when we try to play these in lower positions, we run into a modification of the pattern. For example, if we take E major, we find that um, the third note G sharp isn't playable on the fifth string simply because the fifth string is tuned a half step higher. Um, so take a look at this. So we run out of the problem right there. However, um, we do have the possibility of playing this note on the sixth string. Uh, this, of course, changes our 2-3-3 format, and we have to make adjustments on the following strings to get our second set of patterns that we'll call the 3-3-2 patterns. So here's 3-3-2 on sixth string. These patterns, just like the 2-3-3, are easily transposable. For example, if we move this one position up, we get the F major scale. The fingerings for this one should be as follows. One, two, four, one, two, four, one, two. And notice the stretch in the lower strings. One, two, four, one, two, four, the stretch and then a contraction on the highest string. One, two. Let's make note of a few things here. Like with our first set of patterns, all scales will be played on three consecutive strings. However, the new pattern consists of three, three, two notes, meaning on the beginning string, we play three pitches, and on the following, we play three, then finally, um, two more on the highest string of the pattern. The set of patterns involves a bit more stretching and contracting of the left hand fingers due to the rearrangement of pitches. Practicing these scales in all 12 major keys is a great way to learn the fretboard while becoming familiar with the notes in each major scale. However, it's important to be intentional about how you practice. So don't just memorize the patterns. You'll benefit most from practicing each of these scales while saying either the pitches themselves or scale degrees or a fixed do solfege. Start out by learning two to four keys in each pattern to get familiar with how to play them. Then once you're comfortable um, with playing all of the patterns, you can start to work on more keys. Before you start practicing a piece, try playing all of the patterns in the key to warm up. And that's all for today. Thank you for watching this video and have fun practicing. You can transpose this pattern to um, another position. For example, it would be D major.